Google processes over 3.5 billion searches every day. That's about 40,000 searches per second, serving users across the globe with near-perfect uptime. This isn't just a search engine. It's a technological titan managing an estimated 25 exabytes of data, 25 billion gigabytes. How does Google handle this colossal scale so seamlessly? Let's explore the evolution of its systems, from its early days to today's cutting-edge infrastructure, condensed into seven key sections. Imagine typing a search query and waiting seconds for results, or worse, getting an error message. Frustrating, right? Now imagine that happening to billions of people daily. That's the nightmare Google avoids through its incredible infrastructure. With 3.5 billion searches a day, Google's systems are a marvel of modern engineering. But how did it all start? And how does it work? Let's dive into the journey of how Google built, and continues to refine, the backbone of the internet. Google's ability to deliver instant results and constant availability isn't accidental. It's the product of decades of innovation, solving problems that didn't even exist when the company began. From storing the web's chaos to syncing data across continents, this is a story of engineering ingenuity, and it all starts with a simple database. In the early 2000s, Google's data management was surprisingly modest. It relied on MySQL, a popular relational database system that organizes data into tables, much like a giant digital spreadsheet with rows and columns. This setup worked well when Google was a small startup indexing a fraction of the web. Picture a librarian cataloging a small town's library. It's manageable with a single filing system. But as the internet exploded, so did the data. Suddenly, that spreadsheet had billions of entries, growing by the second. MySQL was built for vertical scaling. To handle more data, you upgrade a single server with more CPU, memory, or storage. Think of it like souping up a single car to make it faster. It's effective up to a point, but there's only so much power you can cram into one machine before costs skyrocket and performance plateaus. Worse, if that server fails, everything stops. It's like having one overworked employee handling all customer service. Eventually, they'll crack under pressure. To cope, Google tried sharding, splitting the database into smaller, more manageable pieces across multiple servers. This distributed the load, allowing Google to keep up with growth temporarily. But as the web expanded, even the shards became unwieldy, and coordinating them added complexity. Sharding was a bandage on a broken system. Google needed something radically better. Enter Bigtable, Google's groundbreaking solution unveiled in 2006. Unlike MySQL's vertical approach, Bigtable scales horizontally, meaning it adds more servers to share the load rather than maxing out one. Picture a restaurant. Instead of having one chef cook faster, you hire more chefs to handle more orders. That's horizontal scaling, and it's infinitely more flexible. Bigtable organizes data into a giant table with rows and columns, each row tagged with a unique key, like a license plate for each piece of data. When the table gets too big, Bigtable automatically splits it into smaller tablets and distributes them across servers. Need more capacity? Just add more machines. Performance stays smooth because the workload is shared. This adaptability was a game changer for Google's ballooning data needs. It powered search, analytics, and more. And its influence spread beyond Google, inspiring tools like Apache HBase. While Bigtable handled structured data, like databases, Google also needed to store massive, unstructured files. Think web pages, images, or videos. That's where the Google file system, GFS, came in introduced in 2003. GFS splits files into 64 megabyte chunks and scatters them across chunk servers. A central master server keeps track of where each chunk lives, directing traffic when a query comes in. This setup allowed Google to process countless requests at once. If a chunk server failed, others had duplicates, so the system stayed online, like a library with backup copies of every book. GFS used an append-only method, adding new data without altering the old. This minimized errors, as changing existing data can lead to corruption. It powered Search, Gmail, and Maps during Google's early scaling years. But there was a flaw, the master server. Like MySQL's single server limit, the master became a bottleneck as Google grew. One point of failure in a system handling billions of queries? 
not ideal. So Google evolved again, creating Colossus. Colossus ditched the single master, distributing control across multiple servers for better resilience and scale. It also introduced erasure coding, a smarter way to protect data. Instead of full duplicates, which double storage needs, erasure coding splits data into fragments and adds parity bits. If a fragment is lost, the parity bits rebuild it, like solving a puzzle with missing pieces. This slashed storage costs by nearly 50%, a massive win for a company storing exabytes. Colossus also uses smaller chunks than GFS's 64 megabytes, optimizing for smaller files and real-time tasks. Why YouTube videos and Google ads load instantly. As Google expanded globally, it faced a new challenge, keeping data consistent across continents. Imagine a bank transaction in Tokyo and another in New York. If the data isn't perfectly synced, chaos ensues. Enter Spanner, Google's globally distributed database launched in 2012. Spanner's secret weapon is the TrueTime API, which syncs time across Google's network using atomic clocks and GPS. This ensures every server knows the exact time, down to milliseconds, so data updates are ordered correctly. It's like giving every musician in an orchestra a perfectly synced metronome. No matter where they are, they play in harmony. Spanner also uses the Paxos algorithm, where servers vote to approve changes, ensuring all copies of the data agree and preventing conflicts. Plus, Spanner dynamically shifts data to high-demand regions, like moving inventory to stores during a sale, keeping performance smooth as usage spikes across time zones. Whether you're in Sydney or San Francisco, Spanner ensures you see the same search results, Gmail inbox or Google Doc in real time. Even with world-class storage systems, physical distance can slow things down. The farther you are from a server, the longer it takes for data to reach you. This delay, known as latency, can make or break the user experience. Every millisecond matters when you're waiting for a web page to load or a video to start. To tackle this, Google leverages two powerful strategies, caching and content delivery networks, CDNs, fine-tuning them to deliver data at lightning speed. Caching stores popular data, like trending YouTube videos or frequent searches, on servers closer to users. CDNs take it further by placing data in regional hubs worldwide. Google goes beyond traditional CDNs with the Google Global Cache. By partnering with internet service providers, ISPs, Google embeds its servers directly within ISP networks. It's like having a mini Google data center right in your neighborhood. Whether you're searching for a quick fact, streaming a YouTube video, or collaborating on a Google Sheet, the data is already positioned as close to you as possible. It's not just about speed, it's about crafting an experience so seamless you don't even notice the engineering marvel behind it. Running the backbone of the internet takes an astonishing amount of energy and a bulletproof approach to reliability. Google's operational mastery in these areas isn't just about keeping the lights on, it's about doing so with minimal waste and maximum resilience. Google's data centers are among the most energy efficient in the world, a necessity when you're powering exabytes of data and billions of daily searches. Google's servers are stripped of unnecessary components. Think of a race car built for speed, not comfort. This lean design maximizes performance per watt, squeezing every drop of computing power from each unit of energy. Google's power usage effectiveness, PUE, a key metric for data center efficiency, hovers near 1.1. This means for every watt used to run servers, only 0.1 watts go to cooling and overhead. Compare that to the industry average of 1.6, and it's clear Google is in a league of its own. Google is a major player in renewable energy, investing heavily in wind, solar, and other green sources. By 2030, Google aimed for carbon-free energy, a goal that pushes the boundaries of what's possible in sustainable tech. When you search for something, you expect results instantly, every time. Google delivers with 99.99% uptime, meaning services are down for just five minutes a year. How? By designing for failure, Google knows things will break, so they build systems that thrive in chaos. In a world where data is the new oil, Google refines it with precision, proving that scale and sustainability can coexist. That's the quiet brilliance of operational mastery. From MySQL's humble spreadsheet to Spanner's global synchronization, Google's journey is a masterclass in scaling. 
Each innovation, Big Table, Colossus, Spanner, and beyond, solved a unique challenge, creating a system that's fast, reliable, and efficient. Next time you search, remember, it's not magic, it's engineering genius, sparked by two Stanford students 25 years ago.